So this question is a little long. It's, if Allah loves his creation so much, why did things like the Bosnian genocide and the current Uyghur genocide take place? Why would he want us to suffer at all? Uh, yes, they may be rewarded in the afterlife for their troubles in this world, but what if they were good Muslims who were going to be rewarded anyways? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِن قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ uh, So this question deals with the very, very difficult topic of theodicy. Uh, theodicy is explaining the existence of evil. Uh, theodicy is a perennial problem. It goes back to the very beginning of time. Uh, and there are thousands and thousands of philosophers and theologians that have attempted to answer this question. Why is there pain and suffering and evil in this world? Uh, in a nutshell, there is no simple answer that is, that is going to appease a person in two, three minutes. On the contrary, this is a topic that uh, much can be said, and I've actually given longer lectures. Google, uh, how do we explain evil by Yasir Qadi? And the existence of evil by Yasir Qadi, you'll find entire lectures on that. In a nutshell, uh, those who end up denying God because they don't understand evil, which is the default of modern atheism, uh, neither do they end up solving the problem of evil, nor do they have questions to the bigger problems of life, which is what, why are we here and what is the purpose of life. In other words, this question is primarily the stepping stone for the rejection of God, right? Number one reason why, you know, um, uh, uh, people like Sam Harris and Stephen Hawking and uh, Richard Dawkins, the number one reason why they're atheists, the number one reason is they give you a long list of the problems of this world. The, you know, children that are suffering, the tsunami waves, this and that. And they say, how could a God allow this? The response to this is twofold. In rejecting God, neither did you solve the problem, you still have evil, right? And then number two, you have created an infinitely longer list of problems that you have no answers to. And that is life itself, and the meaning of life, and the purpose of life, and who created us, and how did we get here? Whereas what we are positing is that we begin with the paradigm of humility. When Allah announced that He's creating Adam, and Adam was not like the angels, Adam had a sense of free will, even the angels questioned, why would you do that, O oh Allah? Why would you create a creation that's going to kill and cause evil and cause bloodshed? Even the angels asked the, basically the same question, why, what's the wisdom? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not attempt to rationalize to the angels, even though the angels are better than us and smarter than us. Yet Allah did not rationalize, He didn't philosophize why are there human beings that are going to be creating evil on this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply said, you're going to have to trust me, I know things you will never understand. Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. So we begin to answer this question with a sense of humility. We might not be able to understand the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then once we begin with that humility, are there wisdoms that are mentioned. Yes, there are, and I have many, many that are mentioned. I'll just mention uh, one of them, or two or three of them, okay, then I'll stop. Number one, we firmly believe that the potentiality to attain good from any evil situation is more and outweighs the evil itself. The potentiality for good outweighs the actual evil. Number two, Allah does not love the evil, but Allah loves the good that is generated from the evil. Number three, there is indeed a hereafter, and if you're not going to take the hereafter into account, you will never understand. That child that was suffering, the pain that was happening to the parents, the tsunami waves, everything, there are blessings that come from that in the next life. Now, could Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have done it differently? Yes, He could have, He chose not to. I can't question Allah's wisdom, neither can you. It's not for me to do that. There's a verse in the Quran, He is not questioned for what He does, rather they will be questioned for what they do. La yus'alu amma yaf'al wa hum yus'alun. And then the final point that I'll mention, then again, listen to my lectures. The non-theist, the, the atheist, essentially, listen to this carefully, demands heaven without doing anything. Listen to me carefully. The non-theist is irritated that he hasn't been handed heaven on a silver platter because the world that he's positing actually does exist. The world without suffering, 
the world without pain, the world of eternal life, the world of bliss, it exists, we call it Jannah. And in order to get to Jannah, we firmly believe there's a stepping stone. And that stepping stone is showing how you deal with the pain and suffering of this world. You want that place of no pain and suffering? Then live this world with dignity, with faith, and you shall get that world that you desire. But these people, they're frustrated and irritated that Allah created them and then didn't just hand silver platter, uh, Jannah to them on a silver platter. And Allah says in the Quran that, did you think that Jannah would come to you for free? Do you think you're going to get this blessing for no reason? No. Allah created us with a wisdom and purpose in mind. If we live this life the way that He wants, then we shall live with inner peace in this world and with eternal bliss in the hereafter. And listen to my other two lectures online or three lectures and you'll get more answers than this, inshallah. يا من أجبت دعاء نوح فانتصر وحملته في فلكك المشحول يا من أحال النار حول خليله روحا وريحانا بقولك كون